Hello everyone, it's Linda. Today we are going to talk about application verification. This means that verifying your application through Google so that you can release it to production. In the description section below, I am going to include all of the documentation links that I used in order to create this video for you. I recommend that you read through them all because they do change from time to time and any changes will not be reflected in this video. Let's get started. Several years ago, Google implemented a change, which meant that when you create a project on Google Developer Console that accesses Google APIs, you may have to have it verified by Google before publishing it. The process developers may or may not have to go through depends upon a number of things. It's a good idea to go through your project on Google Developer Console and ensure that it meets all of these requirements before you click that publish button. Verification can take time, but by making sure that your application complies with all of the requirements before you click that publish button can ensure that you go through this process as quickly as possible. If your app is using Google APIs to access user data stored on Google, this can mean anything from public profile data to Google Calendar data to files stored on Google Drive and even the YouTube API. Your app may need to be verified. The easiest way to know if you may need to be verified is if you created a project on Google Developer Console and you configured the consent screen. Then you should continue watching this video because you may need to be verified before you click that publish button for your app. Whether or not your application will need to be verified depends upon what data you are accessing and how you're accessing it. For example, are you accessing users' public profile information, Google Calendar data, files stored on Google Drive, or maybe even health and fitness data? Are you just reading this data or are you writing to it? When you set up your project on Google Cloud Console, you define which scopes your application will be using. Scopes are used to define the scope of access an application is requesting authorization from the user for. Every API has a different set of scopes. However, some APIs can use the same scope. For example, the Google Sheets API can use the Google Drive API scopes. When using OAuth 2, your application requests the scope of authorization it needs in order to do what it was designed to do. It does this by defining the scopes in the form of strings. When your application runs, it notifies the OAuth server what scope or scopes of authorization it needs the user to consent to in order to do what it was designed to do. The OAuth server then presents a consent screen to the user who will then have the option to authorize your application and grant you consent to access their data. It is very important before you go through the verification process to ensure that you are requesting the minimum scope your application needs in order to run. If you are only reading data, then you should only be requesting a read scope and not a write scope. When it comes to verification, the scopes can be classified into three types, non-sensitive scopes, sensitive scopes, and restricted scopes. An example of a non-sensitive scope would be the Google Drive API app data scope. An example of a sensitive scope would be Google Drive API metadata read only. And an example of a restricted scope would be Google Drive full access. The process you will go through with verification will depend upon whether or not you are accessing non-sensitive scopes, sensitive scopes, or restricted scopes in your application. 
it is very important to prepare for verification. If you have not completed all of the requirements before hitting that publish button, Google may send you an email requesting that you fix these issues or they may just reject your request outright and then you will have to start the process all over again. There are several steps to preparing for the verification process and they again depend upon which category of scope you are accessing, sensitive, non-sensitive, or restricted. All applications accessing Google APIs will need to comply with the following steps, no matter which type of scope you are using. Ensure that your app complies with Google APIs terms of service. Verify the ownership of your project's authorized domain using Google Search Console. Verify that all branding information that is displayed to the user on the OAuth consent screen, such as the project's name, support emails, homepage URL, privacy policy, and so on, accurately represent your application's identity. And make sure that your home page is public, relevant to your app, and accurate and inclusive and easily accessible to all users. Your home page must be on your domain. Make sure that your app's privacy policy is visible to all users, also hosted on your domain and linked from the consent screen on Google Developer Console. The privacy policy must disclose the manner in which your application accesses, uses, stores, and shares Google data. Apps requesting the sensitive scopes must also complete the items that we discussed earlier. In addition, they need to include a detailed explanation for each of the sensitive and restricted scope that the project is using. You must describe why you cannot use a narrower scope. For example, I am requesting read access on Google Drive in order to read the user's file data. I cannot use the app data scope because I intend to read all of the user's files and not just the ones created by my app. You must also describe exactly what your application does with this data and how it helps the user. You must then prepare a video which shows your application running. You need to show the OAuth login or sign in screen in English. Show the consent screen where it displays your application's name as well as the URL bar using the client ID that you have created for your project. Then you will need to upload that video to YouTube and link to it in your verification process. Again, the process needs to be completed in English. The verification process for restricted scopes is a little more difficult and harder to explain. You must complete the previous two that we discussed. You will need to complete everything in the non-sensitive scope section and the sensitive scope section, which we discussed. You must ensure that your application is listed under the permitted application types in the additional requirements section for API scopes. I have added a link to this in the description section below. Google will only allow you to create specific types of applications using the Gmail API and the Google Drive API. You must also comply with the limited use section. This means that you cannot transfer the user's data or allow others to access it. You must comply with the security data handling section as well and demonstrate that your app adheres to certain security practices. Your app will need to go through an annual security assessment and obtain a letter of assessment 
from a third party designated by Google. If your app is a task uh, or an automated platform, you will also need to create the YouTube video showing your application running. If it is a multi API workflow pattern, you will need to show videos of all of this as it occurs. You will need to create the same video showing the OAuth section and the consent screen for each of the client IDs that you have created in your app. The process for verification for restricted apps can be quite confusing and I recommend that you read all of the documentation I have linked below with regard to restricted app verification process. There are some exceptions to whether or not your application needs to be verified. If your app is used for personal use, in other words, you will be the only one using it, or there will be fewer than 100 users using it, then technically you do not need to be verified. You will be subject to the unverified app screen, and there will be a cap of 100 users on your application. You cannot remove a user once they have verified your app, or once you have added them as a verified user in Google Developer Console. If your application is in development or testing, then your application doesn't need to be verified until you are ready to publish it and go to production. You are limited to the 100 test users, though, and you will still be seeing the unverified app screen. Apps that are designed for internal use through Google Workspace also technically do not need to be verified. However, they also will see the unverified app screen and be limited to the 100 users. The same goes for anything using domain-wide delegation through a workspace account. There are some things that you need to remember before submitting your application for verification. You need to ensure that you are using the minimum possible scopes to access the data you need. You need to have your domain registered and authorized in Search Console. The name of your app, the logo, and all of the URLs linking to your homepage and your privacy policy need to be properly configured in the consent screen. Also, Make sure all of the videos showing your application performing are done in English and that the browser is set so that the consent screen appears in English. The verification process can take time. You need to be patient. And by preparing everything that we have discussed here in advance before submitting your application for verification, it can help to ensure that this process goes quickly and as smoothly as it can. Well, I guess that's all for now. And I hope this video helped you to understand how to go through and prepare your application for verification with Google. I have a large list of links in the description section below. I recommend that you read through as many of them as you can if not all of them, to prepare.